It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here. We're getting close to the final version of Windows 10 for the spring edition. We'll have the details. And they're actually adding features. Uh, what's going on with Microsoft versus the U.S. Department of Justice? The Supreme Court's hearing it. Apple, did they really kick Azure to the curb? And a whole lot more coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 559, recorded Wednesday, February 28th, 2018. Wear socks to bed. Windows Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV, the fun and entertaining way to sharpen your IT skills. Visit itpro.tv slash WW and use the code WW30 to get a free seven-day trial and 30% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with these cats right here on your left. <laughs> Wearing the green cape, Mary Jo Foley from AllAboutMicrosoft.com. That's her ZDNet blog. On your right, in the purple trunks, Mr. Paul Thorat. That is weird that you just said that because when he you said cape, is. I thought of a purple one-note cape that I just found in my stuff because I was unpacking boxes mm -hmm. from the move. <laughs> and then you said cape, and I thought that's weird. And then you said purple. <laughs> purple trunks. <laughs> one note purple. Yeah. Yep. Is that the, uh, that's the official, I'm looking at my one note. It's purple. Is that the purple. official? Uh, it yeah, is. Yeah, I think I got it from Laura Butler Laura. at uh, Build yeah. last year. And it's yeah, a, it, she, what does it say? Like, it's have a big. It's just a, it's a cape that it? has the one note logo on the back, like mm -hmm. a, instead of the Superman logo. I like logo. that. I would like that. <laughs> he wears it at home. Somewhere. Yeah, I wear it around the house. <laughs> I have, I, a the cats. I have a T-Mobile cape. It was a giveaway on there. And Josh, Josh Windish, one of our editors, went in there and he like came back with like four of them. <laughs> he says, I have extras. <laughs> okay, thank you, Josh. I have an unlimited number of them. It's from T-Mobile. <laughs> I don't know where it is, though. Yeah, a lot of different teams at Microsoft have their own little like Apes. gag logo thing. Yeah, I got you know? these, the Microsoft mustaches. Those are good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, apparently, I, for some reason, I have now in my desk, John. John's obviously been a mustache drawer. So, oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, John. You need one. Yeah. Did you Where's the Magnum P.I.? Is, is Magnum P.I. one of the mustaches? Mustache it must be. Supply. Somebody refilled my mustache supply. I don't know which one... Uh, Months ago, I refilled this. I didn't realize. We ran out, we ran out John says. <laughs> I you don't always know. Need more? Which one's the Magnum PI? Is it? No, it's none of those. Wait, let me see <laughs> the other one. Yeah, this one's kind like of. The this ball player the, on the right. The that's cheap, pretty close. The ball player. Or the musketeer. Go. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll try the ball player. 12th party <laughs> style. Like this is like the Raleigh Fingers ball player version with the twirly. Uh, this is kind of a ripoff because there's really only six party styles. They just doubled yep. up. <laughs> That's a ripoff. <laughs> the other one's in storage. The the cape. Oh. You got two of these. <laughs> the other uh, the good mustaches are in the safe, Leo. Surely you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually almost did order good mustaches made of real human hair. Uh, oh, God. Yikes. But I'm, I, I'm glad I didn't. I don't Jeez. think I look like Magnum P.I. <laughs> exactly. <No. laughs> yes, Mr. Thorold. Yep. Yeah, you look like Josh. <laughs> Would you just answer the door? I'm Higgins, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, it's like that guy is like, indubitably. <laughs> you know yes. Time for Windows <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> now we're going to talk about Windows 10 RS4. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't grow a mustache. It takes a normally dignified person and turns him into Higgins. 
Oh my God, that is good. So, <laughs> I'm leaving it on. So, um, <laughs> let's talk about. We're getting close, aren't we? To I'm gonna uh, have to face some other direction now. I'm not sure if I can look at the screen. <laughs> Here, I'll just I'll put you guys up. You don't have to look at me. Oh, We're. Um, <clears throat> I like how it's like half as wide as it should be for your face. You know, yeah, it's like a problem. kid's mustache. It's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I also put it a little high. It's like someone that's why trims they gave you two of each ones. They, yeah, put them they side trim by a little side. too much on each side, and then it ends up looking like that. You should be closer to the lip. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't help. It's a little twisted. There we go. You can wear two, two, two together. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Yeah, you're like a like a drunk guy from a Three Stooges uh, episode or something. <laughs> All right, enough of me. This isn't about me or my mustache. It's about Windows. Oh and my God. we are getting close because what is 17, <laughs> I'm sorry, 1803, right? Right. 1803, and tomorrow is three. That's right. Julia, if you think I'm going to be able to focus on anything right now, you're sadly <laughs> mistaken. <laughs> Just don't look. Don't look. Oh my god! All right, just put you guys up, and then it won't. It won't, it won't be an impact uh, on you. Uh, um, build uh, seventeen one ten is out. Yes, was that the one that came out as we did the show last week, or is this another one? This is yesterday. Is yesterday, yeah, okay. brand new. I'm speaking away. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And the funny part is they're still adding features, which is kind of surprising at this point. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, two new enterprise features yesterday that are um, all about custom actions and scripts. And so I didn't really know how significant this was, but I had a couple of people tweet to me and say, this is going to make things so much easier for us to deploy these Windows as a service updates thanks to these scripts. Scripts. So, scripts. Scripting. <laughs> Do you think that they, they probably, I mean, they probably have a bunch of features in a drawer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, take this one out. <laughs> that drawer is labeled RS5. Yeah, but well, maybe they're finished, but they don't, I don't know, why would they hold on to them? Don't you want as much beta mm -hmm. testing time as you can get? I don't know. Well, that's why it's a little strange yeah. that they might add yeah. things this late in the process, but they seem to do this with every release, right? I know, right. Right, like right near the end, suddenly there's still more features and then it just stops and then they finish fixing bugs and doing updates. And then one day there's RTM, which they don't call RTM, but we call RTM. This is not RTM, yeah. probably. This is no. not RTM. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, in fact, there's a big bug in this build where a lot of people don't see the Microsoft Store icon in the taskbar, which... You know, frankly, it would be kind of a cool feature. Not so bad, but yeah. <laughs> Do you, <laughs> you know? see it, Paul, or not? <laughs> uh, I, no, that's what I was just thinking. I, I literally, yeah. when this thing came out, um, I was in the middle of something. I never actually installed it yet, so I, that's what I was, I'm not going to oh. do it now. I don't want to download the build while we're doing this, but uh, yeah. Oh, I come on, Paul. Oh, be brave. <laughs> be bold. Live on the edge. <laughs> Live on the edge. What could go wrong? Yeah. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Well, you've been having trouble with the past couple builds, right? Like I, I've seen you struggling on Twitter yeah, uh, with these builds. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I, uh, I don't even remember the time frame anymore. I spent, I think it was last weekend, a lot of time just bringing a machine back up. Yeah, from that. So yeah. I was getting great, well, green screens, but blue screens well, that's on a not Surface good. laptop. Yeah. So if you, th it's uh, someone asked me, someone when they saw the one of the pictures asked me, you know, what did I update or what did I install that caused that and. I actually had kind of forgotten about it. I, I, I was, you know, I was trying to think like, yeah, what did I do? And what mm -hmm. I, what I tried to do was, you know, in, in the box, you can upgrade from S to pro, um, mm -hmm. you know, on the fly. Right. And I tried to do that from the insider build for some, there was like this one thing I had to run and I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to put pro on this thing. And when he went into the store, it loaded the page for, um, windows 10 pro workstation instead of the pro update from S. And I think it might oh. be tied to the fact that, well, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really matter what I think, but I, it, it, that doing it doesn't matter, right? Who cares? I, we all have theories. I think UFOs are real too, by the way. But um, <laughs> we, it just screwed the whole thing up. So like, I, it just yeah. started green screening after that, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it took me. I, I not related to the Windows 10 Insider Preview, but the, I had a lot of trouble with it. It was the Surface recovery disk uh, that you make that I had mm. problems with. Okay. Yeah. We're getting there, though. Getting there. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah, but you yeah. shouldn't be getting yeah. 
blue or green screens of death at this stage in the game. That seems yeah this um, is surprising. Obviously, because um, I hate myself and I am an idiot, I am going to go and do exactly the same thing again now that I brought the machine back up. Um, but I, I, you know, it's it's never you never really positive what the issue is, right? I've been updating this thing over time, so it's possible that it's a install over install type of thing. It might not happen this time, so I haven't gotten to it yet. It's mm. every time I look at it, it's a little depressing. Like I, it's. You know, it's like jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. It's like you're going to screw up a perfectly good computer. Like, it's working fine. Like, I kind of hate to mm -hmm. screw with it right now, but yeah. I will. Yeah. But anyway, uh, the other thing that might happen this week still is there could be a Redstone 5 build. Donna was hinting on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's already been one a week ago. Mm -hmm. The first Redstone 5 built. So, that you know, that also tells you how close they are. They're already starting to release to yeah. testers these early builds of Redstone 5. Yeah, when did Which, they announce Skip Ahead last year? Was it like August-ish or, uh, or even so. earlier than August? You know, somewhere yeah. in that time frame. So. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, only we're, Skip we're Ahead is getting stage. 5, right? Yeah. yeah. But this gives me hope, too, that um, they'll probably talk more about Redstone 5 at build, I would think. Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's the obvious place tested. in time. Yeah. 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 And you know, the announcements they had last year went so well, so <laughs> why not, why not, why not yeah. repeat that? I'm sure well, this time will be a, a giant Well, you know what they won't do? You know what they won't do at Build, right? Yeah. They won't say yeah, yeah. this is going to be in Redstone 5. They'll just say right. it might be in Redstone 5, it might not. Well, I mean, that's the general feedback I would give them. You know, you don't, it's yeah. very simple to solve this problem. Just say we're working on these features. Mm -hmm. Some of them may appear in the next version. Some may not. You know, we'll see how yep. it goes. And then yep. that's it. There's no hard yep. feelings. Well, there's still hard feelings. Oh, there's still hard people, feelings. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but at least they have that to go back on. I mean, the problem right. was last time they came back and said, hey, guys, we never promised this in RS4 or 3, I guess it was at the time. And actually, let's play the tape, Bob. Uh, you did promise it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to fix. It'll be I'm I'm very curious what is going to make it into Redstone 5 like will will some of the things around timeline um and cloud clipboard actually be in there this time or Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, that's right cuz uh, timeline just got bopped out of ours for didn't it? No, it wasn't timeline t sets got bopped, right? Sets. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sets yeah, those out. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking, you know, the, Microsoft's in kind of a weird place with Windows 10 in some ways because there's a lot of things that I think kind of fall toward the nonsense end of the scale, meaning features that don't really apply to a lot of people like 3D or mixed yeah. reality, whatever, you know. So right. that stuff all makes it in. It's successful. It works, whatever. And then yeah. there's the stuff that I think is more important and, you know, just from my perspective, kind of a productivity type feature. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have problems with this stuff. And it, uh, the problems are related to adoption. So a feature like My People or timeline both suffer from the same issue, which is that it needs buy-in from third-party apps, services, or whatever yeah. for this thing to really make sense. And it never happened with my people. That's and I kind of worry about timeline because it's a good idea. But if mm -hmm. third-party apps don't support it, you know, it just kind of sits there by right. itself. It doesn't really do much. Hmm. True. The, you know what else we don't have this time yet, anyway, is um, a list of what's new for enterprises in Redstone 4. Remember, they made a big deal out of this with some of the previous ones. They they actually did full yeah. blog posts saying, hey, here are all the enterprise features coming in this build of Windows 10. And I asked this week, I said, is there something like that? And they said, uh, nope, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, maybe there will be a blog post about all the enterprise stuff. But you can kind of yeah, go back it. and try to pull out what might be there. But... Some some of the features in the enterprise builds that show up may not make it into the finals, so it's kind of hard to know what is actually going to sh ship as part of the enterprise version. I, I mean, I think from the perspective of the enterprise, and I am speaking from vast experience because I don't cover this market at all. <laughs> um, you know, I think that the the bigger stuff, in a way, is going to come through Microsoft 365. That you know, the management yeah. capabilities. Um, that allow organizations to roll out Windows 10 or manage updates on Windows 10 or whatever are in, in some ways more important than individual features, you know, that might be mm -hmm. the product that would impact right. end users, right? I think it's yeah. more like the back end management stuff. Yeah, and a lot of security stuff too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, I understand we're going to have uh, an update to the update. 
as well. <laughs> so that's good update to the update. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a, uh, the last build. That was kind of confusing. They made an update to Windows Update. Oh, yes. Um, well, they have right. to do that. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, update would be out of date. That's right. Yeah. You don't want your updates to be out of date. <laughs> no. Right. Did they do anything important to the update, or is it just... Um, I wonder if they added features that will give us new and exciting features down the road, but we just don't know yet. <laughs> well, you know, what Raph and some of the other guys are the ones who go in and like look in the right. builds about yeah, all the things the that are not listed in the blog yeah. posts that are interesting. Right, right. So, yeah. Actually, I have yeah, talked uh, about that. Yeah. yeah, I have a little clip from, uh, is that the other show? It must be the other show you do with BD Sam's. What's that? Oh, the... Uh, Oh, by the way, this is a the, scene in the second one where he's he's with a little kid and he says something. You got to go back to the beginning. Respect the. So this is I, this I, is my IPA joke. Mary Jo's going to love this. Uh, this. You know what's funny about this is I'm confused about which is the dog and which is you. All right, so picture, if you will, for those of you listening. I'm talking about Transporter Two here, by the way. <laughs> which is, <laughs> and uh, the part of the dog will be played by Paul Thorat. The part of Stewie will be played by Brad Sams. <laughs> I, I think there's a scene in the second one where he's he's with a little kid and he says something like, um, respect the car and you respect the man. You know, it's like a real silly yep. kind of um, driver's guy, you know, life mantra thing. So I, I came up with one for IPAs, which is just say no to IPAs, respect your mouth, respect yourself. <laughs> I'm very uh, pleased with yourself about this. I know. I know. This is so much better. <laughs> if you would please just do your I show. <laughs> As Stewie. That would be hilarious. <laughs> and, I'm still uh, curiously proud of that joke, by the way. I, we uh, know. Uh, I was more <laughs> impressed by the animation, to be honest. I know. That's it's Justin amazing. Salvato does those. I don't know how he finds yeah. the perfect clip. I know, he it's does. amazing. For every yeah, moment. because the timing's great. Like, there's even like a little gesture as he delivers yeah. the, you know, the punchline. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and then Stewie and Brian yeah. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sent that one to my wife. That's really I'm like, true. I don't know why, but this makes me really happy. Yeah, it should. <laughs> That's immortality, my friend. <laughs> uh, yesterday, the United States Supreme Court, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. SCOTUS. SCOTUS. SCOTUS, which is really an undignified nickname. But anyway. It is. Yeah, it's perfect in many ways. <laughs> SCOTUS heard arguments on the Microsoft versus the United States of America. Uh, this is the Irish email... It mm -hmm. is. Case of the Irish email. The it case is. of the well, it's like a uh, like a murder mystery. <laughs> Sherlock the Holmes email. and the case yeah. of the Irish mm -hmm. email. Yes. yes, the moors were foggy this morning. <laughs> we were sitting at twenty two B Baker Street when a curious man knocked on the door. <laughs> Hello, Governor. Yes, Mister Gates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I I have a problem. <laughs> My email stored in Ireland. Yep. So it's the magic of software. The uh, mm -hmm. issue is the Department of Justice uh, wants access to uh, yep. emails uh, in an investigation of a, a drug trafficking case stored mm -hmm. on Microsoft servers over there in Dublin, where all the leprechauns live. Mm -hmm. A federal judge in New York had issued a warrant. Microsoft challenged the order in court, and it is now in front of the Supreme Court of the land. Yeah, this has gone back and forth literally to yes. every tier of the legal system that exists. Yeah. And uh, it is now at the pinnacle of that system. <laughs> so I guess we'll yes. see. But this is not a no. clear-cut case, right? I mean, it's not. you can make great arguments in either in, in either direction. And I, I think the, the bad part from a technology enthusiast perspective is imagining the chilling effect it would have if the United States government, in effect, ruled that U.S. companies, or that the U.S. government itself, can seize data stored in data centers that are physically in other countries. Now, yeah. this, uh, according to Mary Jo Foley's article at ZDNet, uh, could be taken out of uh, SCOTUS's hands, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. SCOTUS has hands, uh, by the United Nobody States Congress, tiny little, tiny little SCOTUS <laughs> hands, because there's something yep. called the Cloud Act. Yep. Uh, what does that What does that do? Right. So yesterday, um, you know, so, so I should say, since the beginning, since 2013, when this case started, Microsoft has been making the argument that you know what, this shouldn't even be something that's settled by the courts. It should be something that is settled by law. Um, so now there is a bipartisan um, proposal for a law 
uh, about this very topic, about how data is governed in the cloud. Um, and so yesterday when they had this hearing, according to the AP and Reuters who had reporters there, um, a couple of the justices were saying, you know, why are we even talking about this? Like, shouldn't we just wait and like let this law take effect and have this be decided in Congress instead of by the court? Uh, so actually reading reading these reports about what happened during Microsoft's argument yesterday, it sounds like Microsoft is likely to lose this case. I can't say they will for sure because you never know what's really going to happen. But Yeah, that's my um, guess too. I think they're going to lose. And yep. you can kind of see Microsoft setting themselves up to say it's okay because we're going to now count on Congress to govern on this and not uh, the courts. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at with it. The court is supposed to rule on this at the end of June. I don't know when the Cloud Act or how far along the Cloud Act is um, along the path towards becoming something. But uh, I think we have video of the Cloud Act uh, do, attempting to. Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm wrong camera. Like, I apologize. Cloud. <laughs> Just clouds. Just cl it was clouds. <laughs> Just a bunch um, of clouds. So the Cloud Act uh, is good for Microsoft? I mean... You know, I, I think what they... What Microsoft, and not just Microsoft, by the way, Amazon, Apple, a lot of the companies in tech, anyone who has something in the cloud are worried about is this whole chilling effect of if, if the U.S. is allowed to go and seize data, what's going to happen to them in their cloud business, right? I mean... Nobody in other countries will want to put data in these clouds because they'll say, right. wait, your Although, government can steal it. <laughs> already GDPR is requiring that that data be stored That's right. in uh, European clouds. And mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. you know, Apple just moved the iCloud data and keys to China yep. because they record, require that. Right. I presume yep. Microsoft will do the same with OneDrive. Yeah, so, you know, Microsoft... Microsoft did an interesting thing um, a couple of years ago with the German data centers where they actually created data centers in Germany that keep the data there and they're administered by a third party data wow, trustee. That's right. Yeah, that's, um, what, so that's what Apple's going to do in China. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, so they're kind of trying to head this off in multiple ways. I but, mean, I think this is the this is just what's going to happen, right? It's it just, is, uh, I think. Uh, I don't know if this well, is, so it breaks the internet in a way, but... Uh, does anybody know... The, the person in question, who apparently is a suspected drug dealer or something, is that the right. deal? Yeah. Um, yeah. Are they a U.S. citizen? Yes. I think that's um, okay. So why was their data... Okay. Or are they... Are, well, Actually, they broke U.S. Yeah. law. You know this, Mary Jo, more than I do. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think, if is the person a U.S. citizen? I can't remember. I think the person is. Okay. I mean, uh, maybe it doesn't matter. Well, it matters in some ways, but... Um, it's fair to say that this person allegedly broke some U.S. law by do, by some activity related to drugs or whatever. So the case kicked off, court. this is from a Tech Republic, the case kicked off in 2013 when prosecutors obtained a warrant for the emails of a suspect in drug trafficking investigation, which was mm -hmm. stored in Dublin. Obviously, the, if the U.S. is, is investigating it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean oh, wait, that the... resident of Ireland. So I the person is a resident of Ireland. So he is okay. a resident yeah. of Ireland, but the U.S. government's yeah. going after him. That explains why the data was in Ireland. Yeah. Right. All right, this is, yep. a, you know, it's a, it's a sticky. That's sticky interesting. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's um, above and beyond this GDPR thing. Yeah, this is completely right. outside of that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, a but, lot, a lot but of people in fact, ask this would what? violate Microsoft's brief said this would violate GDPR if they were to give mm -hmm. this to this the uh, U.S. investigators, Department of Justice. Right. And it could be penalized yeah. by in Europe <laughs> with a fine as much as three point yeah. six billion dollars for doing so. So yeah. that's I, think if I understand they forwarded that. that to the U.S. government. They would pay the bill. You know, it's all fair. <laughs> uh, wow. This is really uh, a sticky yeah, it is. yeah, it's not. It it's is. not clear cut at all. No matter what your feelings yeah. are about this case, um, I think anyone would basically agree that there are, a, a you know, there's a case to be made in either direction. I agree with Mary mm -hmm. Jo. I think the Supreme Court is going to rule against Microsoft. It looks like that. Um, now, this, yeah, the so, ruling would take months. I mean, these yeah, well, June, so not that many months, right? right. I mean, it's it's going to be fairly. So it's quick. a race yeah. between the the. The Congress and and the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah I don't but this know. is a, a huge precedent-setting case, right? I mean, this is yeah. this is going to have amazing ramifications. It will. It will. Yeah, I'm trying to find out where the Cloud Act is and everything. Um, 
If you think about I, it, um, this is the cloud provider version of net neutrality. It's basically going to create a situation where only the biggest companies will even mm -hmm. be able to afford to be able to meet the requirements of, you know, of, of preventing this from happening, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, as a U.S. company, I mean, well, it's actually, the cloud acting really committee right it. now, by the way, in the Senate, it's in committee. Oh, okay, there's. It okay. hasn't been read out of the committee yet. Okay. Yeah, it's. Right. So, it's Cloud gonna, Act. I'm reading about it here. It, it would enable the U.S. It, well, it's a whole. It's a whole, deciding about this whole issue. And it, will the U.S. be able to obtain data stored on foreign soil after special agreements between the countries? Uh, see, they want a treaty so that they don't get fined. Yeah. That's what they right. want. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So it's still in committee in the Senate. I don't know. Let me look. See where, where it's yeah. going in the House. But it's. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. So Brad Smith, who's president of Microsoft and the chief legal officer there was the one who spoke um, in the court. And I had to, I had to laugh because it reminded me so much of the DOJ case at the end, he came out and made a statement and the statement was kind of like, it was a good day for Microsoft. I mean, he didn't go actually say that, but that's what they used to say every day at the end of the court case for the DOJ, they, no matter how badly it went for Microsoft to be like, it was a good day for Microsoft. And I kind of felt like yesterday he, put a brave face on and said the same thing. Yeah, it's in the it's in committee in the house as well. So it's Is it? it's okay. it, I mean depending on how active Congress gets it could pass but right. I mean, it's it's early it's just been introduced in effect, okay. you know, they're not. So probably not that close yeah, to being yeah. approved or not. Yeah. It's going to be bad. I, I mean, it's not just, uh, like you said, Leo, it's not just for Microsoft. It's for anybody who does business in the cloud. So, I mean, yeah. Facebook is a big interest in this. You know, um, obviously Amazon and Google, everybody is basically on Microsoft's side on this one. Uh, well, as especially, far as tech companies. Especially if, it, if it's a counter, counter to European law. Right. Because, I mean, that's this is where you have this weird interlocking jurisdictions and oh, yep. what a mess. No, it's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. What you want, I guess, if you're if you're Microsoft, is for the law of each country to apply to mm -hmm. data stored in that country, and no other country can override that. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't look like what the Supreme Court's going to rule. Yeah. So what the lower right. court ruled, right? Yeah. The thing, I mean, this is it, 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 it's this touchy. I mean, one gets the feeling that if there was that treaty in place, that the U.S. Justice, Justice Department, whoever, could go to Ireland and say, "Here's the right. deal. We're trying to do this," right? And Ireland as a country would probably say yes. Yeah, they mm -hmm. would release that data, you know, or allow them to release the data. Um, but that's, you know, obviously what their Microsoft is trying to uh, fight off government overreach here. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Microsoft has a political agenda. They just they just don't want to get stuck in the middle and get a billion dollar yeah. fine. <laughs> well, once this happens, I mean, it opens the floodgates. But it, I mean, it looks bad, and, and you know, your users want you to protect their privacy. But honestly, I think companies right. at this point, you know, are acknowledging we're going to have to ad ad adhere to the law of the land, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. We just want mm -hmm. it to be clear, and and not cause uh, problems because they don't agree. Yeah. What a mess! I don't blame. It is. A, I don't blame Microsoft for wanting that. This is a messy one. Yeah, and it, you know, it, and it, of course, it affects their business. I think that's ultimately what they're exactly. worried about is that people won't use, uh, but but it, but it, they won't use the cloud. I mean, it's not just going to affect Microsoft. All cloud right. providers will be subject to this. Yeah, anybody who I mean, data is stored all all over the world. Like you, most of the time, you don't even know where your data is. It just because you're here in the U.S. doesn't mean your data is here. It, Microsoft would partition it up. I mean, Google has actually said, I think, that every message, multiple parts are stored in different data centers in different locations. So it's it's actually, you know, going to really impact everybody's business because it's so thorny an issue about where is the data. The solution is uh, full encryption. Trust mm -hmm. no one encryption. But then the courts will go and law enforcement rather will go after the companies to break encryption or to provide back doors. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's just a... It is. Uh, it's a mess. <laughs> it's just, oh, oh. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Azure, mm -hmm. Apple in their iOS security paper, which they released last month, <clears throat> in the la the year before they'd mentioned that they were storing iCloud data on Azure servers. This year they said on Amazon Web and Google servers, mm -hmm. and didn't mention <laughs> they Azure. change it every year. <laughs> well, you know, I imagine they they negotiate deals every year, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, this. so this is another one that goes way back. I remember when we were first getting tips on this in 2011, we were getting tips of people saying, guys, psst, part of iCloud is on Azure. And of course, you know, Apple wouldn't talk about it. Microsoft couldn't talk about it because of client confidentiality. Right. Um, then in 2014, I think it was CRN who discovered the first iteration of this iOS security guide, which said, hey, part of some of the encrypted iOS files are stored in Amazon's S3 and Azure. So there's the confirmation. It was running there. Mm -hmm. Now, the new version of the same guide just came out um, th this month or last month. And it said, yes, like you just said, some of, the, some of our data that's encrypted for iCloud is being stored in Amazon and Google Cloud. But the way this is worded in the security guide doesn't mean it's definitely not running on Azure. They just said some third-party right, storage systems, right. including blah and blah, right? Uh, and I think Brad, um, Fireman Brad, actually reached out <laughs> and um, tried to get people to comment um, not on the record, was uh, uh, asking, is Apple still using any part of Azure? And people were telling him yes. I don't know who these people were. Hmm. Um, right. So, yeah, I was curious if there had been some kind of update on this because I, I think they're yeah. actually using all three of these things. I would guess. To some I would degree. guess that yeah. too. And I think they're using Spanky's file service and Mega in New Zealand and <laughs> exactly. uh, and Joe's oh. closet server. And I mean, why not use them all, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and we don't know. So we don't know how much do they use it. I mean, you know, how how much data is being stored? We don't know how much they're paying. There's been guest guesstimates like uh, I think CRN guest or had someone tell them, Whoa. you know, multiple hundred millions of dollars worth of cloud revenue coming from Apple. But, you know, everybody these days, everybody is everybody's customer. Whoa. I mean, Amazon pays Microsoft, right? Amazon pays Microsoft for some of the software that runs on its cloud. I mean, they pay licensing fees for Windows Server and SQL Server, right? I mean... To say it's so weird that Apple is using Azure or Apple is using Google Cloud, it's really, it's not weird. It's just the way the world is now. Yeah. These, right? <laughs> right. I mean, Apple so. does have its own data center. They have a massive right. data center in North Carolina, yeah. at least. And yeah. so some of it may even be stored in Apple's cloud. It could. It should be. You and think. I think this only comes up because Apple feels it is incumbent on it in the iOS security guide to be uh, transparent. I actually applaud them. Mm. Uh, to be transparent on what they're doing with your data. Yeah. Yep. So that's good. It is good. Yeah. But I think you're right. It doesn't mean a loss for Microsoft. No. It's odd it, that they didn't mention Microsoft. It is. It is. Um, and, you know, who knows why? Yeah. I mean, politics, money, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Best price. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Who knows? And who knows how they use it? And they don't want to. They, they don't want to talk so much about that. No. no. I mean, this is Apple, so all this is is a countdown until they don't have to rely on third parties. That's for this. probably the case, right? Yeah. 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 You would, or at least barely have to. Yeah. I mean, they make money on it. They pay less yeah. than they pay you pay them for it. So it's you know they're making they made ten billion dollars in last quarter on uh, services, if I remember. Correctly, they're doing fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing fine. You know, who I kind of thought Apple would be using, and maybe they do, and they just don't specify. Is IBM, IBM's cloud? Um, yeah, why not? Right, right. I mean, they do a lot of other deals with IBM, support right. deals and enterprise deals. It's I mean, weird that they would specify explicitly Amazon Web Services and Google, Google, yeah, and not mention anybody else. There's, but who knows? God, you need to. I know Apple, you don't know you why. Just don't know it's. And it could just be maybe they're only talking about the encrypted file storage and there are other parts of the cloud yeah. they use for other pieces, right? I think, you know, these companies are all going to have different strengths in different parts of the world and, and they would want to take That's advantage of yeah. who has the best presence wherever, you know, and I'm sure yep. Apple is smart about that. And you know, they, they don't mention uh, they're using Guizhou in China. The company <laughs> in China is Guizhou. Yeah. So they don't mention that. So sure. Mm -hmm. It's just what happens. Uh, let's take a little break, and we'll come back with more. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. We're talking about Microsoft. If you're interested in uh, working in IT. <laughs> still, still wearing the mustache, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm gro it's growing on me, literally. 
Uh, if you're interested in working on IT. <laughs> it's funny how a mustache can change your personality. <laughs> Do you ever have a mustache, Paul? No, it gets, I, I get too itchy. Yeah, yeah. I keep trying to grow one and I get itchy, so I stop. I feel like I could bang it out in a week if I had to. But Oh, I'm sure. You are you look like a hairy kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Our Mary Jo. Uh, Just another day for the gong. Where's that gong? Gong, 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 gong. <laughs> IT Pro TV was created by Tim and Don, neither of whom have mustaches, but both of whom were IT trainers, really expert in helping people get the certifications and the skills they need. Because it's not just the piece of paper, it's the skills they need to get a great job in IT. I know people now all over the place, just talking to a friend. His job is not satisfying, he's not doing what he wants to. He's, you know, he's a youngish guy, he's in his early 30s, he's not too late to think about a new career. He's thinking about IT, and, and no wonder if you look around the listings for IT positions... There's so many unfilled. There's more than a million unfilled IT security positions alone, alone in the United States. So it is a great job, but you do have to have some skills. Now, I figure you're listening to any of our shows. You are already demonstrated a significant interest in IT and information technology. Now it's time to to take it to the next level at IT Pro TV, and there is no better way. It is the most affordable, fun, engaging way. To get those certs you need, go to itpro.tv. I'm typing it in right now, slash ww. Itpro.tv slash ww. And you can take a look at all, you know, take a look at the course lists. They do what they do is really cool. They do kind of like we do. They have a uh, a, a live channel, 125 hours a week. Huh. A lot more than we do, because they have five studios now active. And then, you know, you, so you can watch live as you might watch this show live. If you do, you can be in a chat room, which is awesome. Uh, but you can also uh, watch on demand. And, you know, they're accumulating more and more great content all the time. The on-demand stuff now, there's over 3,300 hours of binge-worthy on-demand training in every area. I mean, CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacker um, courses, those are great. CISA, SQL Server 2016, Azure. There's a number on this. I don't. I guess this has to do with something. I don't know. You, if you're interested, you might know Azure 70 533, CCNA Security, CompTIA is A plus. That's the basic, uh, you know, computer repair cert. If you like getting your hands, you know, into this stuff, you can take these A plus training. But they also have Network Plus, Security Plus. Accelerated Security Plus, Cybersecurity Analyst. Wouldn't that be a great gig? Advanced Security Practitioner. And, of course, everything having to do with Windows, including window, running Windows servers, maintaining Microsoft Office, networking, security, cloud fundamentals, Windows 10. I can go on and on. In fact, you can find it all if you go to itpro.tv slash WW. You can watch on your computer, of course, all these courses uh, stream. But you can also watch. Let's go. Uh, let's go to SQL Server 2014. Let's just take a look at this course. You can also uh, watch um, on your Roku. They have an Apple TV app. They have Fire TV apps. They have uh, and iOS and Android apps. So you can watch in all kinds of ways. You can listen and watch and and just kind of absorb. They have a great team portal. You can track your team's results. Prove the uh, return on Investment of your training spend with IT Pro's supervisor portal gives you full control over your team's training schedule. You can create custom groups, training assignments, view logins, viewing time, video downloads, course completion tracking, see individual and group analytics, and even check out their team solution for group pricing. It is truly a wonderful, wonderful course in all of all kinds. And some great stories. We uh, we played this the other day. James Packer, I love I love his uh, his accent. Work ISS based in the Cayman Islands. We look after he IT for banks, governments, and in the, in the uh, various other organizations 
around the Caribbean. Thanks to training that he got from IT Pro TV, which is awesome. Go watch the video. If you want to know more about the team solution, you can contact them for a team trial for free, including their supervisor portal at itpro.tv slash WW, or sign up for an individual monthly membership. You'll get a free seven-day trial. If you use the code WW30 at itpro.tv slash WW, you'll get 30% off your subscription. 30% off, and not just for the first month or year, but forever, for the lifetime of your active subscription. Join the more than 90,000 IT Pro TV members who are taking courses right now, today. Find out more at itpro.tv slash WW. Use the offer code WW30 to save 30% off your lifetime subscription. Flexible training, binge-worthy content, ROI proven. itpro.tv slash WW. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly and for making a bunch of great geeks out there. I've talked to people all the time. Almost half the people who come in our studio to visit tell me about they're it. They're geeks. Yeah, they're all <laughs> geeks or spouses. Of Only geeks. half, Leo? Half of them. No, half of them say, you know, uh, but maybe, I don't know, like at least half the people who come in to watch this show and Security Now say, oh, yeah, IT Pro TV, I take courses there. I love them. Mm. Back to Windows Weekly, Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, and uh, Fear and Loathing in Developer Land. <laughs> so every time we talk about progressive web apps, and I am still <laughs> bullish. We talked on Tuesday about it, though, yep. on uh, Mac Break Weekly, and mm -hmm. I don't think Apple, for competitive, I fully believe for truly, for anti-competitive reasons, Apple's going to do this, uh, yeah. which which really kind of <laughs> defeats the whole purpose, because the whole idea of progressive web apps is it be completely cross-platform. You, What I, I want to do, for example, well, example, is write a progressive web app for our Twit content. Yeah. Yeah. That you go to the website on your iOS or Android phone or your Windows phone or whatever the heck you're on Windows. You go okay. there and then... Uh, yeah, you, you want it in the store, you want it... It's, yeah, everywhere. it's everywhere. Yeah. And you, so let me... All right, let me let me give you a real world example because uh, my wife... You know, we moved to Pennsylvania last year. I was talking to my wife about baseball. The season's coming up. You know, how are we going to handle it this year? We've always watched the Red Sox. It was kind of cool because... Ooh, that we had, is a problem. We had good local <laughs> announcers. We really liked yeah. that. And I said, you know, do you want to just watch whatever's on TV? And she says, no, I want to watch the Red Sox. I said, all right, well, MLB TV has a season's pass thing, and you can sign it up for 250 bucks. Yeah. Just the t Actually, it's a lot cheaper than that if you just want to follow one team. Oh, it's like okay. $90, $90 yeah. or something. Oh, that's so worth it. Yeah. she said, yeah, just let's do that. And it's a neat service, as you might know. You can watch the local broadcast so I can actually see the guys from Boston telecasting game. We've already watched a couple of preseason games. Normally, we wouldn't bother, but we're kind of excited just to – you know, get over the Super Bowl. So <clears throat> anyway, um, <laughs> MLB TV is available on all kinds of things. You know, there's an Apple TV app. It's on uh, mobile devices and all this kind of stuff. But because I had signed up for it on Windows, I thought, well, they must have a Windows Store app or a Microsoft Store app. Let me go find that thing. And, it, and actually, they don't. They used to, by the way. Uh, back in Windows 8 days, they had created a, uh, a Windows 8 version of it. It doesn't work. Any, it, they don't even provide it if you have Windows 10. So I thought, you know, that's really strange. Like, it's it's kind of a shame, right? Because this is a, it's the the app was probably web based. They probably did some kind of web, you know, they had web technologies in Windows 8 for store apps. I'm, I'm sure that's all it was. You know, curious. So what's the solution? The solution is you can watch MLB TV on the web still, like it still works, right? So that's just one example, of one service. But um, I don't know what the situation is on the Mac. But let's say they don't have a Mac App Store app. They probably don't. I don't know, but. If you're on a Mac or a PC and you want to watch Major League Baseball games, you can still do it on the web. And I think, I guess my answer to you on PWAs is that will always be the case as well. Um, Safari will support all the technologies behind PWAs. Those apps will still work in browser tabs. I realize it's not as seamless and elegant as having kind of an app in your dock or whatever. But, you know, I, I think most people today, and Microsoft even talks about this, you know, spend over 50% of their time in Windows on the web. I mean, yeah. a lot of people, I don't do this personally, but... A lot of people probably have a web browser open with tabs for their email, their calendar, their Here's my you know, use Twitter. Case. Here's my use case. Mm -hmm. I make a special site, mobile.twit.tv. You go to in your browser, desktop, uh, whatever. Yep. It then downloads bits of code. It has service workers, and now it works offline. So it's right. now a podcast app 
Yeah. You could subscribe yeah. to our shows. They'll download. They'll, it'll still work offline. You could subscribe, and when you next get online, it will activate that subscription. It is a full app that works offline. And that's yeah, something think, that doesn't work unless no, you're right. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, no, the I, service I'm, I'm workers not, are provided. So, yes, and on a on a plat that would probably matter more on iOS than Mac OS, but whatever you know, however you choose to listen to podcasts in this case, yes, if you're on a plane and you want to listen to a podcast and that's the thing you've chosen, that thing's not going to work. Right. You know, yeah. So right. that's so you you know if you use a podcast app that's that's what it does it downloads when it's online and it but it has yeah. stuff on your phone offline the app so, continues to work you can subscribe to things and so forth so um i again i'm not that you know, i'm not i'm not here to solve everyone's exact problem but i mean i think in that perspective from that perspective if you're a developer of an app of some kind this, this podcast app that's the promise um, of pwas is that it's it's right it, once it is an right ideal everywhere. right not necessarily a reality yet um it, it's worth I think in that case, the Apple ecosystem is so big that it's PWA still is an advantage because you get it to work everywhere else. And then if you have to make an iOS app, you're still doing a lot less work than you might have had to do in the old in the old days. Or in the old days, you might have said, well, I'm going to support Android and iOS and I'll have two separate teams probably that make two separate apps. and We have to keep them in sync and everything. But you don't get the web and you don't get Windows and by going PWA on the Android side, you, you do at least get that advantage. Right. And I think it's easier to keep those things in sync. So I, I, it's better than nothing. It's it's still better. And I still, you know, I I agree with you, Apple. The, the potential there is, is good for is them so not to I so huge in support. the United States. It's such a big part mm -hmm. of the market that if, yeah. if Apple, and Apple won't, be, by the way. I mean, it's obvious they're not going to because it's they want to lock you into Apple. They have no desire in making anything cross-platform. They don't want their developers to write Android apps or Windows apps. <laughs> they have zero. Yeah, to do I mean, it. no, I, I, yeah, I mean, um, uh, when you flash to that, uh, whatever the other show was, we had that Alto's Odyssey, whatever that game yeah, is. Yeah. Um, there's actually a fascinating interview with the guys who made that game. I think it's on Ars Technica. That's worth reading. And what they talk about is the differences between the iOS market or the Apple world and the Android world. And how you monetize differently in the two different platforms because the audiences are so different. So I think you know again you know if you think about Apple as kind of a, a premium us, experience by the way, on uh, iOS today on Tuesday. So What's I will. This? I, oh, those guys are. Yeah, so ask guys. them about this. Yeah, this is actually really interesting. Yeah. So th those guys are an Apple shop um, from day one, and and they have another group that helps them do the Android conversion. They don't know a lot about that world, but they were saying that it's really interesting because it's a much bigger audience, but. They're much less inclined to spend, you know, five dollars, whatever the cost is for an for a game. But what they would do is download the free game and do a kind of a freemium thing where they can pay for little things in the app and they can monetize it that way. And that the Android world and the Apple world are just different. They're just it's just a different audiences, different styles of doing things, whatever. So, you know, in the in the podcast example, or you could picture different app types. Like I still think it's better, you know, to go the PWA when possible. There are going to be tools that will help you get a PWA into iOS, into the store. I mean, we already have these kinds of things. Um, it may not, it may still be way better than the alternative. But not everything it promises. No, I don't. No, I mean, the it, promise it, is so great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If it would, uh, so, if Apple wouldn't <clears throat> be so piggy. Let's see what happens. Let's let WWC is coming. Um, I would be shocked if they didn't at least mention it. Well, they have this, uh, they have, what they're going to mention is Marzipan. We talked about this mm -hmm. on Tuesday, which is their cross, that's not cross-platform. Well, it is and it isn't. It's Mac OS and iOS development. That's mm -hmm. what they're going to push. They don't want anybody to develop for any other platform. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's not good for consumers. It's good for Apple. But that's the way it is. It's not good for developers. It's not good for consumers. It's yeah. good for Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> so this week at, <laughs> I'm, in, at I'm all in favor for it. I love PWA. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what Microsoft Talks says about it, frankly. The, I, the reason okay, – so, I, look, I, I come at this from kind of a Microsoft perspective, right? The reason PWA is so important is that without this, Windows just gets left behind, right? If developers are going to have to create native apps, they're going to choose iOS and Android, and that's going to be the end of it. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And – this at least makes Microsoft and Windows part of the story. And Microsoft has contributed to the platform by introducing the notion of desktop apps, by introducing the notion of them being in the store. 
And now Google is following suit, right? So Google is adding support for PWAs to um, Chrome OS. And uh, they have told Microsoft that they intend at some point in the future to put them in the store as well, into the Google Play Store, probably after the that conversion occurs uh, or that, uh, what do we call it, migration. Um, but they're looking at that. And so that's neat. So here's Google and Microsoft working together. Honestly, I think we can all agree, <laughs> given history, that's amazing. Um, but, you know, there's, the thing that I think people are confused about with this kind of stuff is that when you look at any developer technology, you have to kind of think about who they target within the developer world and what the audience is. You know, on the Microsoft side, I talk a lot about kind of the Microsoft stack developers, the .NET guys, the guys who have come up in the Microsoft world and they're maybe working in C Sharp and in Visual Studio. And Microsoft provides those guys with ways to kind of move forward. And one of the things I think we'll see at Build is their kind of formal plans for getting those guys into the PWA space. We know from the past, the way they got those guys into the mobile space was Xamarin which they bought. And it, it is a very familiar set of APIs and you use C Sharp and it works just like uh, vis you know, what they're used to in .NET and Visual Studio. So that's nice. But there's these other things that come from other directions. Microsoft does a lot of work to bring code from the web with hosted web apps in the past and PWA going forward uh, into the store to bring desktop apps into the store, to bring uh, mobile apps from Android into the store. I guess, I'm sorry, <laughs> they got rid of that one, to bring uh, <laughs> iOS apps into the store. Um, th there's there's different directions uh, that these technologies had to. So one of the things that happened this week at Mobile World Congress was Google announced the beta version of something called Flutter. And Flutter is yet another, you know, uh, a set of, I guess, APIs, for lack of a better term, for making a, what I think of as a right once, run everywhere kind of a thing. We you, you make an app and it works on both iOS and Android. And, um, you know, they have native look and feel and all that kind of stuff. And they support all the features of the OS. And so, of course, a lot of people are like, well, what's going on here? Um, That's what I said to you. I remember I saw it and I was like, wait, what? So they're going to also support people doing native apps plus PWAs. And the answer is yes, right? These are these are targeting two different kinds of audiences, right? Mm -hmm. um, PWA right. is a way for people who have been developing in the web space or people who are going to come on board to create what I think of as native-ish apps that run across multiple platforms, right? They, it's, it's for web developers. Um, Flutter is for mobile app developers. And like I said, you know, those game developers, for example, but whoever, like any, you've got some team of people or teams of people who are working on mobile apps that have to run on two or more different platforms, tip two in mobile. Um, that's typically two groups of people. You need two teams. This is a way to have one team of people maybe be able to make one app that runs on both. And that makes a lot of sense. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't remove the need for PWA. It's, it's for a different audience. It's for a different market as well in some ways too. So, you know, I sort of, the way I think of it is like PWA is the future. The future is not certain. I mean, I don't mean to suggest like, it doesn't mean everything else just disappears. Mm. Um, but I would say that Flutter solves a very real problem that we have right now if you're a mobile developer, you know. Um, I and have it, to it take lowers it back. the. Uh, Somebody in the chat room just gave me a, a link to an article that came out last week, this, uh, a month ago actually, that says iOS 11.3 has service workers. And, and Yeah, no, they're, they're adding it to Safari. Yeah. Oh, I take they're. it back. I was wrong. Apple, uh, I, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, really interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe we maybe there is a bright future ahead. I look like I said, the future it's uncertain. Things are going to change, you know, whatever. But mm -hmm. um, Microsoft's embrace of PWA has been very interesting to me. Um, you, we all see how that stuff works on Android today. Um, just the ability to pin. I've been talking about this for years. This was a tip I probably had on Windows Weekly five or seven years ago. The ability to pin an app, like a web app from Chrome to the Windows taskbar, it, just by itself. I mean, and this has nothing to do with offline use or actual PWAs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but even that is just a, a very, um, it, it's just kind of an amazing thing. It, 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 it just opens, you can kind of see the possibilities. And so when they start talking about PWAs and providing app-like, um, well, app, I, I would say native-like capabilities, Offline, of course, you know, push push notifications and so forth. Mm -hmm. On Windows, you can be able to have, you know, live tiles that actually are live. The ability to um, find apps in a store, which is kind of cool. It's it's the opposite situation on Android when you think about it. Um, in a store like the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store, um, 
putting apps there makes tons of sense because the there isn't like a volume of apps there that makes high quality apps hard to find. When you go to the Google Play Store or the iOS Store, unless you've got like a special relationship with Google or Apple, I mean, the chances of your your app, no matter how good it is, rising to the top there is actually very difficult. So mm. web discoverability is way more important on iOS and Android, I, I, I would argue, than it is on Windows. Although, you know, both will be available hopefully everywhere. Interesting. Well, you've given me great hope, Mr. Thoreau, <laughs> for the future of our land. <laughs> Flutter. We're gonna. It's gonna be interesting because June is Google I/O, WWDC mm -hmm. uh, is in May, and of course, Build, as you said, was right before I/O, May. I.O., May. Yeah. <laughs> also in May. Also <laughs> May. So yeah. all of this is gonna come to yeah. a head soon. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's get some more Andromeda silliness. Your words, not mine. <laughs> well, I, I feel like every week there's a new patent pitcher, and then people get excited about whatever yeah, they want to call it this week. Because... Andromeda, service phone, you know, yeah. whatever. So yeah. this is, this one, I guess, is this is the detachable one, I think. I try not to look at this mm -hmm. stuff too closely. I just want to <laughs> say, I mean, I, mean, I kind of just, I, I have to mention it because people will ask if we don't. Right. Um, this is like the topic of discussion du jour in our little world. And, you know, guys, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's just see what happens here. I, I, um, I, you know, Surface devices already have this ability to detach and attach and to use magnets and, you know, whatever. And Andromeda will or will not happen and we'll see. I mean, mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to throw anyone a bone, I will just say that this PWA thing we were just talking about, if successful, is what could make an Andromeda type device actually start to make sense? Because the big failing of this thing is the big failing with Windows Mobile. It was the big failing with Windows Phone. It's kind of the big failing with Windows 10, if you look at it just from a store perspective, which is that there just isn't the variety and quality of apps there that you need to make this platform make sense. It doesn't matter how good the hardware is if there aren't apps, you know. And there are billions of apps um, on uh, iOS and Android. And there are 17 or eight, whatever the number is, who knows? It doesn't matter, but it, it's just not the same thing. And you can't just show up with something and say, hey, look, it's pretty. You know, it can't mm -hmm. It can't just be that. Right. And it is I think pretty. people people get excited yeah, about yeah. this this patent um, in particular because yeah. we the one, the one clue we know about Andromeda, whatever this device ends up looking like or working like, is it's all about the hinge, just like Surface Studio was, right? Like... It's even some of the same people who patented the hinge on Surface Studio who are working on some of these other patents for these kinds of hinges. So, you know, it, yep. it gives people hope that, like, it's happening, you know, it's a real thing. Look at they're patenting all these things with the cool hinge and the interesting way it can detach. Because it seems like a big part of Surface's um, MO is you can detach something from a device. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> if this device happens, the only thing I request of Microsoft is they make a commercial with that click it guy oh, and he no, dances around <laughs> no. clicking no. and unclicking. <laughs> Remember the <laughs> th 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 that was the big yep. the big thing in the ad? Yeah. That's yep. all I want. Yep. Click it. I think it's going to happen. I think the device is going to happen. The question to me is the when. And I yeah. hopefully, hopefully, given that they killed the Surface Mini before, they've realized, like, even if a device is super cool and, like, intriguing to the fans, you still have to have a real reason for it to exist. So is it going to be this year? Is it going to be next year? Who knows? Here it there is. There it is. I, I have to <laughs> express some doubt that they have that sense. Um, yeah. You know, you can make an argument that the Surface laptop does not satisfy that need and they ship that thing anyway, right? I happen to love it, but... Let's face it, it's just another <laughs> laptop. God, that's that's all click. <laughs> yep, there it is. It there clicks. it is, everybody. Andromeda. That's, this is all I'm looking for in a laptop. Clicking. Yep, just make that thing two-thirds smaller, and you've got Andromeda. <laughs> well, as long as we're talking, uh, the HP has this uh, WOA machine. They announced a <laughs> Mobile World Congress. WOA. Uh, yes, WOA. HP calls it the Always Connected PC. Right. Yeah, well, that's Microsoft the Microsoft uh, oh, okay. marketing that's term. The technical. Yeah. Does it click? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it actually, no. no. Um, the the keyboard cover, such as it is, kind of folds around it. It's got it's kind of a unique way of doing it. I don't it's know if there's a, a click in there. Maybe, maybe there's a click. There's probably a magnet. 
Running on yeah, a Snapdragon, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. LTE. Yeah, so the kickstand is built into the keyboard cover, not into the device, which was oh. the case with previous versions of this kind of thing. Oh. Um, so it kind of just sits in there. But yeah, there's probably a magnetic aspect to it. Um, it has to, to be pogo pins of some kind, right? You think? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, not Bluetooth. Yeah, probably. But it wouldn't. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Huh. Maybe not. Anyway, it doesn't matter because this thing costs a thousand dollars, and who in their right mind would ever purchase such a? Well, what's wrong with that? I just, what I don't. Because its competitors are going to be priced at about six ninety nine, oh. and when that price was announced, people said it was too high. Um, oh. So people are seeing is this that, is like Windows RT almost, like a that's right low yeah. cost. It's yeah. Right. Four I, I thought, gigs of I was, RAM. <laughs> I was okay with six ninety nine. I think there's a case that can be made for that price point. Nine ninety nine, there's no case. That's ridiculous. And the the issue is that from a performance perspective, this thing is probably closer to like a Y series or a Core M three kind of a chip. Um, like she said, four gigs of RAM. It's I don't know, it's probably sixty four gigs of storage at most. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I was that's really surprised when I saw the that's price. Surface laptop. That's too I much know. money. Yeah, and it's going to be, it's coming out soon. It's shipping as of March 9th. You can already pre-order it. I mean, it's yeah. It's Should we get one just to, to look at it? I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, it is the first Windows 10 on ARM yeah. PC, apparently. So, yeah, I mean, it's interesting in that capacity. I, mm -hmm. The big thing. They're that saying 22 gonna, hours of battery life. Wow. Yeah, so battery life is going to be great. I, I, you know, I, I, everyone, everyone I talk to who has, has one of these or one of the, any of these types of devices has said the same thing, like the, that this is life changing somehow, you know, I, I don't find it that difficult to charge, you know, every night. I mean, we do that with our phones, whatever, but they've said this again and again, all, many different people. Um, but I, the big question here, of course, is the performance. And I don't I've even, I think uh, different things. There. Four, four gigs is enough to perform. Okay. It's storage to me. It's like, well, mm. that's mm. so well, storage, remember that, the thought here is that um, with this kind cloud. of uh, gigabit LTE, yeah, this is yeah. going to be the the beginning of a new age of connectivity. And um, I have a little note about 5G. You know, Intel's getting into the 5G game because everyone is. The way that Qualcomm described 5G was that 5G is so fast that you can access your data in the cloud at the same speed as if it were on the local SSD. It, it removes right. that barrier. It's, it's already good enough for most people. Right. But the ability to yeah. download um, like a 4K movie in some tens of seconds, whatever the exact figure is, is amazing. But it's just the seamless nature of the connectivity with you know to your data mm -hmm. is is the big deal. It does so, have a micro SD slot, so I guess you could put a micro SD in yeah, there, but, uh, 256 yeah. gigs yeah. of additional storage. This will probably you know I don't know what is it. Do you, do you see if it was 32 or 64? Uh, storage. Oh, the storage. Yeah. Did you, was there a? Let me, let me look. There must have been a, a list somewhere. Uh, Twenty-two hours better. Two hundred up to. Two hundred up to two hundred fifty. All right. So well, you know, who knows what the? Well, I guess we could let's find out. Let's find out. Let's buy. It. <laughs> let's what buy is it. the? You can pre-order oh, it. One twenty-eight. So by the way, one twenty-eight is great. That's great. Yeah. That's sufficient. It's UFS. UFS is not great, but that's the type of storage you would get in a phone. If I um, add uh, an S micro SD card, does that show up as a D drive or what? How does that? Yeah. I guess? Yeah. 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 So you can't, it's funny, it said up to 256 SSD. That suggests that at some point there will be a more expensive version that has faster storage. <clears throat> Let's go look at my cart and see what I got. See, I feel like at this price, you should get 8 gigs of RAM. You know, and I honestly, in a, a system that might have performance problems, extra RAM would help a lot. Would this be a good, uh, if it be for uh, a student? Right on the go, somebody. I, uh, so my issue again is is the RAM. It, it's mm -hmm. it's the same issue I had with the base Surface laptop that as they advertised it back in last May. A, a system with four gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. It's not so much the storage; it's the RAM. Is not necessarily future proof for the four years plus mm -hmm. that you would be in college. Right. Um, and I look at this machine. It's first of all, it's an unknown, so we can't really say for sure on the performance, but. I would be concerned about that. And um, I'm also slightly concerned that part of the battery life claim is based on the fact that these things do ship with four gigs of RAM. In other words, if you added more right. RAM to this, the battery life would go down. So they also ship with me... Windows 10 S, my friend. Yeah, but I could upgrade it, right? <laughs> or not. Is it a free upgrade? Yes. You yes. Can. So that's the streamlined that's version of Windows of we all battery. love so much. That's that part of the yeah. battery claim, too, oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I, bet, I would bet. Yeah.
Well, uh, would you like me to buy it just to give you some uh, yes, information? Yes, I would. I, okay. Yes, yes. Well, now it's saying on their site, ships by 316. I yeah. thought it was supposed to be 39. Yeah, it's a week um, later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, maybe they maybe it's a supply issue. Yeah. Maybe so many people are buying them. No. Yeah. I God, I I really <laughs> yeah. think I I think this platform is a good idea. I get why they're doing it. Um uh, you know, I, I I don't know. If you're talking like 16 to 22 hours of battery life, I'm not sure what the difference is there, frankly. Um I'd rather have 8 gigs of RAM. I don't care about the storage 128, I'd be okay with you know, four gigabytes of RAM should be six ninety nine, eight gigs for you know whatever, eight ninety nine or something. This price is just too expensive. Yeah. For what you get, I'm, doesn't mean it yeah. won't. And then well, I no. I mean, you... I, like, all right, here. Let me actually let me bring it up. So, a thousand dollars, right? I mean, what can you get for a thousand dollars? So you you can get a Surface laptop. Now that's not the version I have. The version I have is probably twelve ninety nine. Um, but where where are my notes? Uh, battery life notes. So. Battery life. Surface laptop got 13 hours of battery life. Um, that's for eight gigs and I think 256. Mm. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry for my needs. Uh, I'm going to go with that. You know, I, mm. I get that it's two thirds the battery life, but the performance is on another plane altogether. And the future proofness of that, if you will, is much more certain. Well, I'm going to get that's, one. That's just uh, I think we should review it. Uh, we should see what WoWa looks yeah. like. But, uh, yep. and I, yep. oh. I want to see the, how the emulation works. Huh. Yeah. Like yeah. how that works. Yeah. What I hear is that it's slow at first and then it kind of kicks in. Emulation right. of what? You can run uh, 132 apps on it. Oh. oh. Well, they've rejected my... Uh, <laughs> they were, yeah, you they can't were, have one. They rejected it. They said, I have to call somebody. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I, Does it really say that? <laughs> yeah. It didn't want me to buy one. The other thing I'm a little curious of is, you know, the other aspect of this is the eSIM thing. And, salesman. Uh, how that says, works in Windows. Please contact mm. a sales agent. Do you think yes. that that's Same. so that they can tell me, you don't really want this at this price? <laughs> Mm -hmm. We'd like you to spy a different HP. We heard you trashing this thing online with Therat, and we're not going to sell you one. Um, I can try try a different credit card. Although this one is our company card. It it's a pretty be. little machine for whatever it's worth. I mean, I've oh, always yeah. liked the, the NVX2s. It comes with um, a pen, too, right? I want to try know. one. I think so. I do. Well, you can, yeah. Is it lappable, you can come my over friend, to my house. Paul? Ooh, I would, uh, you might want to go with <laughs> the laptop form factor one, not the uh, NVX2, the Asus, whatever yeah. it's called. I Although know. that was, you know, the Asus was kind of pedestrian looking to me. Mm. And then what did the, there was a Lenovo as well, but I can't even, I can't recall what mm. that even looked like. They all looked kind of generic when you saw pictures of them, right? I mean. Yeah, I, I, the Envy, uh, the HP is the, the best looking the one. The nicest looking one. Yeah. It, is, it, it is nice looking. I mean, I, I'm not dumping on the mm -hmm. quality. No, I know. But, right. Um, it's just the price, the starting price is too much. This is too yeah, much high. of an unknown to spend that much money. Mm -hmm. Do you remember you bought a Surface RT? What did that thing start at? Do you remember? It was, uh, it was a lot. A lot. Yeah, I think it was $7 close Seven ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you had to buy the like keyboard that. cover. Right. Yeah. So it's about yeah, the same price. At least really. comes I mean, with the keyboard and the and the pen even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you know what else that comes with the keyboard? A laptop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> it, it, it 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 should be included. I you know that should be part of it. I'm gonna try a different. I th I think we should. I do think we should review it. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. I would like yeah. to hear I what so. you guys think. Um, so if I, if they will let me buy one, I will. <laughs> I want to see. You know, there's going to be performance benchmarks, which will be interesting. There's going to be just real world performance evaluations, which will be interesting. Real world battery, which will be interesting, and then over time. You know how I don't know how we measure this kind of thing, but the uptime thing. I, I I've been paying more attention to my own laptops, and uh, you kind of leave them sitting without power for days or even weeks. And you kind of, you open the lid and see how they're doing. Um, yeah. In most cases, it's actually not horrible, um, but absolutely those things are draining into the other as they sit there. Yep. And then you have to pay for a monthly um, SIM card, right? right? I mean, a yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an HOA in a house. You don't really ever own it. <laughs> you know, well, you just keep keep I'm on paying. If you might, it might be smarter to buy it from a carrier. I imagine the carriers would subsidize it a little bit, right? Yeah. I don't think you can buy it at a carrier. Um, it's going to be for sale and at 
Microsoft stores and some of the and online um, yeah, places like HP Gear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. until, until they offer it. Uh, I don't think carrying. like Verizon is selling the machine. Yeah. I'm pretty well, sure. Well, you know what I, I presume I can do is put a uh, Google Fi SIM in it, and that actually is fairly inexpensive data. Mm. Yep. Yep. Now, who's going to have 5G? Because that's you just described what I really would like. Yeah. Who's going to have 5G? Yeah. Well, this year, nobody. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, Qualcomm is working on 5G. Huawei is working on 5G. Intel said they're working on 5G. You have to get a 5G capable computer. This is not, I presume. No. no, 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 no. That has uh, like a, a eight forty-five, eight thirty-five. It's probably gigabit LTE. Yeah, right. It's e that so, thing, yeah, yeah. It's not even swappable. Like it's it's yeah. built in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the first five G capable devices won't happen until next year. Probably around this time next year is when they'll be announced. Um, and that is ba that's based on what Intel said. So I mean, I, I would trust Intel pretty much uh, less than anybody when it comes to this kind of thing. But um, I think that's Qualcomm indicated that by the end of this year when they have their next big event they will probably at that time announce their first 5g modem which will appear in you know a snapdragon 855 or whatever in the spring of 2019 mm -hmm. so it's it's going to be next year but right. and uh, then of course the carriers have to roll it out and there's sprint i see sprint and t-mobile both you know yep. jawing at each other mm -hmm. uh doing a yep. lot of yep. uh, back and forth over who's going to have it who's really going to have it that's important because um, those two uh, will compel the actual carriers, uh, Verizon and AT&T, <laughs> to uh, show up and do it as well. Right. Hmm. Okay. Okie dokie. We can skip all this mobile World Congress stuff if you want. It's kind of um, no. I think it's interesting. You liked. I think you already. liked the S nine, right? <laughs> yeah, I am going to order one. I I, I do have the. Um, the feeling that Samsung is all we have between Apple and Oblivion, mm. like they're um, and they were, boy, they were very careful. They were very clear to distinguish themselves from Apple several times in the keynote. No yeah. notch. We have headphone no jacks. You know, <laughs> yep. Things like that. I, 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 the thing that's interesting to me about Samsung is that a year ago ish, they announced the S8 and they had this kind of you know, real nice uh, small bezel curved display kind of thing, 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio. Everyone's doing it. Um, but no one has copied that kind of curved screen bit, not to the degree that Samsung does it. And they don't just have the curved screen. They also have UIs that they can bring up that are unique to those devices. I think that stuff is cool. And so a year later, they no one has copied that, which is amazing to me. And so it's allowed them to kind of focus on other things that are important to smartphone buyers in the flagship space. Of course, the big one is camera. So I'm very – smartphone cameras are literally my number one criteria. This is something I'm very, very interested in personally. Um, you know, they're going with two lenses on the S9 Plus. They have uh, – oh, actually, on both, they have the um, automatic aperture um, change, which is, mm -hmm. you know, a first and, and something you don't see in the smartphone space, just like when – I think I don't know if Apple was first, but Apple has two X optical zoom that they announced a year and a half ago. Uh, you don't see a lot of that for some reason. I, I don't know what's going on there, but I, I really enjoy seeing smartphones take on these kind of um, point-and-click camera kind of features. Um, so I'm I'm excited about the S9. I want to hear about it too because I, I'm going to be in the market for a new Android phone soon. So yeah, are you on Google Fi or do you use something else? I use Verizon. Okay, so you'll yeah, be awesome. It'll be yeah. easy. Yeah, you yeah, can pre-order it. You can pre-order it uh, soon, any day now. Yeah, if this is good well, enough, I'm going to switch off. Which, by the way, going to be a nightmare. Is more than I can say for the HP Envy. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, twice yeah. now. Two different you credit cards. You can't get cards. it. Huh? You can't get it. I'm wondering you if... You know what it is? You got to use the Edge browser, Leo. That's why. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll try it. I tried it with Chrome and Safari. I've tried it with two different credit card numbers. I, I think they're maybe not taking orders yet. I tried to. Uh, oh no, this, I can't say this now because it's a tip. But I tried to do something earlier today and couldn't in Chrome. And I said, "What the heck? I'll just do it with Edge." Who knows? And actually, it did work. Oh, it's, yeah, I do that a lot. You know, you think, "Oh, well, yeah. it's not." They want some other browser. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it might be as simple as I have some kind of weird plugin that is screwing something up in the yeah. process. Yeah. Oh well, I tried. Yep. Are you going to get the uh, the uh, Neo Banana phone from Nokia? <laughs> no, because I'm not a hipster, Leo. I and, want uh, that phone. It's the one that <laughs> Neo uses in the Matrix to get out of his office. Yeah. It snaps open. Yeah, but you know what nobody uses a phone for anymore these days? Phone calls. Fo yeah. The, yeah. The notion of putting a phone on into my head. Yeah, no, I know. That's interesting. <laughs> 
I think it's the type of thing people are going to buy and put it up on a shelf as like a curio. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like a little uh, it's hipster. It's only 99 bucks. Though, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I loved it. it. Maybe you saw this, the Asus Zen phone. They mm -hmm. said uh, they have a notch. They said yes. the notch is 26% smaller than Fruit Phone X. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, I feel like a moral obligation to never buy a phone from a company that does something like that. I, I, I really. Yeah, that's just lame. That's pathetic. It's terrible. Yeah. It's just like the lowest of the low. Yeah. You know, no feature is too dumb not to copy. Here's some proof. <laughs> I have to say, HP has actually created some real demand in me now to get this NV2. <laughs> You're like, I'm right. getting it. <laughs> Damn you, HP. Yep. You're thwarting yep. me. That's maybe, weird. You can't get it. It's uh, really weird. Yeah, maybe it's too. I'll try ordering it later in the day. Maybe they're they're mm. uh, maybe they're not. They're overwhelmed by demand. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the ticket. Just like build. I oh. I have to say though, I like the idea of something super portable, twenty two yeah. hour battery life, always yep. connected. How do you feel about small screens? Is it really small? Is it eleven inches? I think it's a twelve. It's got to be a twelve point five. I, you know, I mean, really, if I'm going to choose a computer, it's going to be a, I know. You know, a Lenovo. I know. But that's a, exactly that's, 14 that, inches, by the way. That is, that is a bad thing. I this asked, thing by is, the way, I asked Lenovo, they and and I asked PC makers this. I've, I've heard different things, but I asked them. I said, look at the look at your display. You've got room in there to go three by two. Why don't you do that? And the guy who designs these things told me they desperately want to do that, but oh. no one is making those parts. Mm. Oh. And... Um, that's interesting. They agree totally. They they what he said was, they resisted the push to sixteen by ten and then sixteen uh, actually by to sixteen by nine and then 16 and held by on to 10. four by three yeah. panels for as long as they could. Yeah. They went sixteen by ten next because it was kind of on the way, and then they had to go sixteen by nine. And he says, listen, if we could get someone to make those for us, three two is better for products. They would do three two. I mean, they, if you're they, gonna watch I, movies all day, okay, but yeah, but come on, I don't, I, seriously, I know, <laughs> it's I a lot. Know. I mean. <laughs> So I'm so happy to hear him say that because this this verifies everything I've ever thought about three by two. Like I, and it's one of the things I really like, and one of the many things I like about the Surface laptop for all its problems, the screen is beautiful. Yeah, this Envy is it? Uh, it is 12 inches. Is it six by nine or? Is, I mean, uh, I believe it's by three by two. Three by I two. I bet it's three by two. I, I think, think that's so. a nice form factor. I really do. I really like it on the Surface. Yeah. Well, people, it makes sense on a tablet two and one because when you flip it to portrait, it doesn't get that elongated effect, right? right. Which is nice. But I still think three by two makes sense just in a laptop form factor. It's just better for productivity apps. These are the when you're reading, you need that kind of you know you you don't want to look at it like it's not a Sergio Leone Western. You want the you know <laughs> right? No, I mean I, it, it, that kind of form factor just doesn't make sense for productivity. Oh, yeah. Huh. 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 Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, why don't we do the back of the book? I'll, I'll continue to try to buy a, a laptop. Yes. Make. I'll try to give my $1,000 to HP. I'll continue okay. to try while Paul Thorat does our tip of the week. Yeah, so every month at the beginning of the month, I mentioned that Games with Gold is renewed. It's this Today, as we record this, it's actually the 20th of February, but for some reason, those games for March are now available. So if you're listening to this live, you can go to xbox.com and find those, well, two of the four games, the first two. Um, those are available. Oh, wait um, a minute. What's this? Oh, did I, I link to the wrong thing? I clicked the wrong link. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, I didn't provide a link. So the other one is if you are a second class citizen running Call of Duty on Xbox One like I am, uh, good news because the first DLC, the map pack, is coming out, I think, on Friday. It's coming out, actually, it might be tomorrow, March 1st. March 1st or March 2nd. So it's coming out this week. And you can um, play in the Resistance. Yeah, the, this is only three. Like, there's three multiplayer maps. One of them is a remake of an awesome Paris map from uh, Modern Warfare Three. Um, there's a, a new war mode map, and there's a new zombies experience. Um, mostly, I'm concerned with these three maps because I spend so much time in this game. I'm surprised I'm still married, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited that this is finally happening because I'm really getting tired of this. Whatever the six or this seven. This actually looks in. really fun. I'd love to play. Yeah, the that's Resistance. the remade map right there, yeah. uh, which is literally called. I think it was literally called Resistance at yeah, the time. Yeah. Um, excellent. Here's so I'm Russia, really looking forward you're to this. In Russia on this one, play, play, fighting for the Soviets. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this game has, has some Stephanie goofy, ever play played? This? Has Stephanie no. ever played Call of Duty? No, she can't stand this kind of thing. <laughs> I just was curious. Okay, good. <laughs> if I have this game going, like my daughter will watch TV in the next room and she'll just quietly walk in my room and close the door. <laughs> so she doesn't have to hear it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Plus, it doesn't help that I have kind of a Tourette's thing when I'm playing video games. But what you swear a little? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I spend a lot of t- my time, you know, it, um, screaming at screens. When you think about yeah. it, like whether it's yeah, um, you, do. you know Windows or uh, Xbox or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a, a big it's an occupational hazard. It's a big part of my experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then I've got two app picks. Both of these are actually just updates to existing apps, but they're great. So uh, the Grammarly keyboard, which is oh, available yes. for iOS and Android, was yes. updated on Android. We use that. Um, yep. I, yeah, strongly recommend this thing. Um, it really, really cool. Gee, I and would so think as not, a writer, you would say, oh, I don't need this. Oh, no, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> I need this desperately. And actually, I, I need it more than ever in many ways because uh, on Windows, at least, I am now writing in what is basically a text editor. And so when I post uh, stuff to the web, yeah. it does have some basic spell checking or whatever. But this thing also does grammar checking. And it's kind of nice to have that check before I post anything. But, you know, it works in on Twitter because I use a, a web app. It works in my email program because it's a web app. And so it's nice to, you know, didn't catch the email I sent to the uh, Microsoft person today instead of Mahedi. But that's <laughs> not what it's designed to do. It's like, are you sure you want to send this email to someone who's not Mahedi? Uh, would have been nice, but um, anyway, I believe I've ironed that one out. Anyway, uh, Grammarly for Android was just updated. I assume the ah. iOS one will be updated soon. I just, Did you get I the just got the HP Envy. Yeah, <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Um, no, the other thing is, let's just say your okay. date is for shipment. Does yeah. Uh, let's see. It's, and when I, it's I ready, I didn't get expedited shipping. I, I feel like we're cooking mm-hmm. them as fast as we can, Leo. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, does it say? Shipment status, delivery, 316 will be the ship date. Yeah, yeah, that's what they go. were saying, yeah. yeah. So that must be what, the end of the next two weeks? Or and I can exchange it for up to 30 days. So if it yeah. really is horrible, I guess I yeah. would uh, exchange yeah. it. But on the other hand, I, I like I, the idea. I don't of think it's going to be horrible. I just think it's too yeah. expensive too for what it is. 120, yeah. what, what do we say? 256 takes an X uh, micro SD card so you can get it. Eight, eight gigs and 256, $9.99. I have no problem with it that. It should have Four eight gigs, gigs, 128, $6.99, maybe no, $7.99. No, I think it's 256. Isn't oh, it? you think the one you got is? I, they oh, I didn't, thought it was They didn't have any um, options. Oh, okay. So I don't know. Mm. You know what? Who mm. cares? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? That's uh, Qualcomm Adreno Graphics. 12.3 inch WUXGA multi touch edge to edge Gorilla Glass 1920 by 1284 gigs of RAM 120. Wait, 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 what? 1920 by 1080? Yeah. Is that bad? See, that's not, that's not 3 by 2. No, that's 16 mm. by uh, 9. Yeah. Right? That's curious. For oh, no, a, no, no. Uh, I misread 1280. 1920 by 1280. It is 3 by 2. Okay. I was going to say that's curious and, for, and, uh, for a 2 yeah, 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 yeah. And 128 gig uh, UFS. You're right. Yeah. It won't be fast, but it, w- it probably won't feel slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you're going to be able to tell us in about two weeks. Yeah. So. You know, as cool as I could put a bunch of movies on a uh, micro SD card, put it in there. That'd be great for the plane. Mm-hmm. 22 hours. Yep. It says 19 hours of video playback. I know. It, if the battery life pans out on this. That's true. It's... Right. Yeah. We'll see. I'm going to uh, use it on my way to Japan. I'm going to play Age of Empires the whole way. Oh, what are you going to Japan? Wait, you're going to Japan? And why is everyone going to Japan but me? It's the future. I love Japan. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, we're going uh, what, what in April, April going? 19th through May 5th. We're going oh, you're for gonna the Cherry the best Blossoms. Time. The best. Ch- the Sakura nice. Festival. Yeah. Really? I'm going to make this happen. This is really eating it's so me. so great. You know, if I were you, I'd go to China. I want to go there, too. Yeah, I've, I China, I have a, I've been a little bit to Japan, but China is just, it's the, it's the mm-hmm. future, I think. Mm-hmm. For I've for good or ill, period. but it's the future. I mean, I yeah. think they're moving more towards an authoritarian. You know, sure. now the president, well, is, sir, president that is for certainly life. the future, Leo. So you have yeah. a point. Well, <laughs> so. as democracy yes. and uh, and uh, mm-hmm. and capitalism decline, I think uh, right goes out with a whimper. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Speaking of a whimper, Microsoft um, Edge for iOS. <laughs> So that was also recently updated uh, with support for 3D Touch. So if you have a modern Apple device, I think that's like iPhone 7 and newer and the newer iPads and iPad Pros and things, um, I think. You know, you can press on the screen and it does that kind of haptic feedback thing. Uh, That's cool. And they also mentioned, by the way, that they're going to come up with a version for the iPad pretty soon. So, you know, Microsoft Edge on iOS, if you install it on an iPad today, you just get the iPhone app blown up, which is kind of lousy. So they're actually going to support the bigger screen. I, I... I don't actually use this browser, but I got to say, if you do use Edge on 
Windows, you need to look at the mobile version of Microsoft Edge. It's surprisingly solid. Like, it's really, really good. I have lots of problems with it on Windows, which is why I don't use it. Uh, if you don't, look at it on iOS and Android, whatever you're using. It really is amazingly good. I need to try it more on Android. I have it on there, but I never use it, but I should. Yeah, it's just as, it's yeah. it literally is using the Chrome browsing engine, so you're not missing anything. And if you use it, I don't know, what do you use on your computer, though? Would you use Edge? Chrome. No, so you don't, then don't Chrome. use it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no point. I mean, you want to have that synchronization. Of, you know, you get like your passwords. I mean, I have, and, um, Edge. I have Edge on my computer. Yeah, no, I know. It's like a little virus that everyone has on a computer. But the point is, if you're not using it, I know. You know, it's, there's I'm no not. point in using the mobile version. I need to make myself try it more again and retry it. I do. I'm glad I don't write about Microsoft because I don't have to. I could just <laughs> let you guys do it. <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll make you a deal. I'll get the HP Envy and you can use yeah. Edge. Really okay. slightly crazy. Actually, wait a minute. Oh my God! I'm gonna have to use Edge on the Envy, right? It's that or IE. No, um, 10s. I can't use Chrome. What about, on it. Can you use Chrome in emulation? Emulation? What's that? Can you use Chrome the browser? You mean on Windows yeah. on ARM? Yeah, of course. No, but it's you 10s. Can. But oh, right. You'd have to upgrade to Pro. Sorry. So I can't upgrade this to Pro. Is uh, you can? Yeah, it's free. Yeah. You can with the free upgrade. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, yep. I can use Chrome. All right, I probably should use it as it is though for a while. Try it because we don't know what don't the yeah we don't want to know what the battery life will uh, end up being, right? <laughs> oh boy, this see this Try is all it. this is what I'm talking. This is exactly what I'm talking about. What we're going to find out is that a Windows 10 on ARM PC, once you add eight gigs of RAM, once you put Windows 10 Pro on there, is going to get 12 hours of battery life. And I then know. the whole point of this thing is is just thrown <laughs> right out the window. That's what I'm worried I about. I swear to God, if that's All what right. happens, well, I, will, I give up. I will, you know, that's I, part of the review process. I'm getting this not for my personal <laughs> benefit, but so we can yeah, yeah, yeah. try out these propositions. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but you, you can kind of feel it coming, can't you? Yeah. You know, no. but that would be a good test of the premise <laughs> that S gives you better battery life. That's know? true. Well, I know yeah. that's true. I, I, one thing I will say about the promise of S is that uh, there's no proof point to it. You know, Microsoft says over time the performance doesn't degrade; it gets better battery life. Yada yada yada. How do you know that? Show yeah, us. I have to. I have you know, to. Where, I have where's to the data the on that? Use 10s. Yeah. Uh, so I I just thought because it's ARM, I couldn't put 10 Pro on it. No, Windows 10 on ARM is just Windows 10, so it, this okay. that works. It's not. Okay. It's not a. It's just not just S. It's, it's yeah. not like RT. Nope. Well, well it is no. a little bit like RT, <laughs> but except RT, you couldn't a, go. RT anywhere, was right? a. Was, how did I say? Uh, Windows RT was a one-way dead end road. Yeah. 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 But this how, is not. How does it run with Linux? Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you to test. Wow. <laughs> That'll be the last step of the test. <laughs> <laughs> Enterprise, Enterprise pick of the week from Mary Jo Foley. We need a klaxon here. Do we have a horn? Oh, I can get one. Okay. Wait a minute. A clown horn or a gauga? <laughs> no, a good horn. A good horn. A clown horn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said what, she, what she did sounded a little bit like a clown horn. I know. That's, that's not okay. what that's that. not what you're we talking about. That. You want like no, we can use it. Okay. <laughs> because yes. the enterprise pick is finally true guest access will be available for Microsoft Teams starting next week. So if you remember, guest access, one of the most requested features of Teams. Oh, sorry, yeah. wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> a band, a symbol, that something. That was something. a dramatic sting. There we go. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go with the clown horn. Well, it's kind of appropriate <laughs> because... It took Microsoft a while to pull this one over the finish line. But, um, yeah, when they when they first announced Teams a year ago, they said, don't worry, guest access is coming by June. And then June came and went, and then it was like, okay, <laughs> guest access. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I don't know if that's the horn that's I want. <laughs> oh, that's boy. the dive sound. I think what she's looking for is one of those, like, uh, trumpet kind of announcement things, like, the king has arrived, you know. <laughs> Oh, you want a fanfare? Yeah. Oh, you got to tell me. In you know, terminate terminology is very important. It is. You want a oh, trumpet fanfare? Maybe. Okay, we can do that. 
That's easy. Okay. Wait, wait he's, he's, he's licking his lips. <laughs> Jeez. That is way too close to taps. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> True guest access for Microsoft Teams. Doot, doot, doot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, come on. Guest okay, access. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you want to care about this. You do, you do. Yeah. Guest access, you know, like if somebody's not in your org, but you want to add them to a team, you haven't been able to do that unless they had an Azure Active Directory account. But as of next week, <laughs> as of <laughs> next week, <laughs> You, you will be able to add anyone with a commercial or a business email address. Outlook.com, Gmail, Yahoo. Oh, yes. Oh, man. It deserved a horn. It deserved a whole symphony, really. Um, because people have been waiting for this, and here it comes. And it's here. Uh, what did the parent show just talk about? Tip, <laughs> I don't know. Related, but to, it related tip with no horn. <laughs> yes. And but the, we do need Brad, the fireman on this one. This is actually really, really exciting. So, it Brad, is. go ahead. Brad broke the story. Yep. Um, there may be a free standalone version of Teams coming sometime soon. Right now, to get now you to play the Olympic uh, fanfare music. Oh, that would be good. That's oh, yeah. what you really wanted. Yeah. All right. That, you, right now, you have to have an Office 365 account to get Teams. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> Fanfare for the common it's teams. Common common <laughs> everyday person team. Um yes. And you know why they're doing this, right? Cuz Slack has a free version. Yeah. Sure. Right? Yeah. Sure. Although no one um, uses it cuz you 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 know, you run out of free quick. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, Microsoft will be like this too. It'll be like a freemium entry level yeah. version yeah. and then hey, you can upgrade for 9.99 a month to the full version or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't know it's for sure, but it's looking pretty solid that it they, could I, They have to do something like that. They have to. It's not you competitive know, they, otherwise. They did it for Power BI. When Power BI first came out, the business analytics service, there was only a paid version, and then they went back and they added the freemium free tier of Power BI, and then they have the paid tier. So I think they'll do the same thing with Teams. There you go. <laughs> Codename pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley. So um, this is a joint discovery by The Walking Cat and Taro Elhonen together. They, they piece this together. So they found this video on the Microsoft Research site that since has been removed. But Zanzibar is a, quote, new sensing platform that enables novel forms of play and interaction. So I started looking around more and I'm like, wait, there's a team in Microsoft UK research that's called Connected Play. And I think this must be a project of theirs. Um, exactly how it fits in and pl the word play makes me think maybe Minecraft related oh. somehow. Um, they mentioned the maker culture as being an influence. Oh. Um, so I don't know exactly what this thing is going to be, but I'm it's a research guess. project. Given because yeah. it's coming from Cambridge where yeah. uh, the Raspberry Pi came from. Uh, yeah, and Microsoft does have relationships that, with Raspberry Pi. I wonder if it'll be an Arduino or a Match or some sort mm -hmm. of processor-based uh, sensor. You know, remember Intel uh, did the Edison that was kind of designed to support people doing kits and projects. Yeah, yeah. yeah they still do stuff like that, don't they? They killed yeah. the Edison, but yeah, oh, yeah, but did? I think they still mm -hmm. have. Don't yeah, they yeah, still yeah. have? Yeah, yeah, that kind mm -hmm. of absolutely. Yeah. Kit computer. Yeah. Cambridge UK is kind of a giveaway. I know it's Microsoft Research, but that's right yeah. next door to uh, to Raspberry Yeah, it's, if you read the description of Connected Play, they talk about sense, sensing interactions in natural ways, and they even use the words evoking emotion and magic. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know about that either. But <laughs> oh, wow. huh. yeah, so something something in the works with research and play and the maker community that is codenamed Zanzibar. I have to say they are doing such a great job as stewards of Microsoft, of uh, Minecraft. Minecraft, yeah. Uh, the, yep. new, the new Minecraft update, uh, Aquatic, is going to be amazing. It's coming out in a month mm -hmm. or so. And 
they just really are knocking it out. And we talked about the the Microsoft Minecraft for chemistry. I know, yeah. that's crazy. Um, huh? I just feel like yeah. th this has become so much yeah. more than it was. Yeah, and they, and they could have really trashed it, but they but they did the opposite. Mm. They could have just let it flounder along. I mean, I, yeah, that's amazing what yeah. they've done. No. Yeah, so I like I like yeah. what they're involved. In. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have some beer. <laughs> yes, beer let's. me, beer me, Mary Jo, <laughs> beer me. Okay, given we started the show with a Family Guy clip with Paul dissing IPAs, of course my pick is going to be an IPA no, today. You, you asked for it, Paul. <laughs> what was respect that saying? Respect your mouth, what respect was yourself. Respect your mouth, respect yourself. <laughs> well, this so this week in New York, it's Craft Beer Week. And so I said, let me pick a New York brewery. One of my very favorites is Other Half in Brooklyn. And they make a bunch of super big hoppy IPAs, like 10% big kinds of beer, but they also make this really good sessionable 4% beer called mm. Forever Ever. I like that because I like to drink a low alcohol. Yep. That's why I drink cider. I like to drink something yeah. a little low so alcohol. Yeah. You, can, you can drink a lot of these and it doesn't feel watery or like nice. you're just drinking something that has no taste. This has a lot of nice, hoppy, delicious flavor. Sometimes I feel like it, Brooklyn is made of hops. It does. It does. <laughs> um do you smell it from over the river? That you just, that oh, man. You walk into their tap room and you're like, woo, hops. <laughs> hops, woo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great, I, yeah Lagunitas is like that, too. Very hoppy. Yep. Yeah. Very. I like it. Yep. I respect Forever, ever. Yep. Good name, Opinions too. Opinions differ. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I tell you. Paul doesn't even, do you drink, you don't drink beer at all anymore, right? No. Wow. That's kind of sad. Oh, if you understood how much but you lost a lot of wine, wine and whiskey I consume, you wouldn't feel bad. But you look great. I mean, it's working for you. You're in. Uh, are you are you constantly in ketosis now, or have you backed off? No, a lot no, of I'm not. Actually, I haven't been in ketosis for a long time. But I'm you just did doing the it's ketogenic thing, right? Yeah, it's yeah. basically just low carb at this point. Yeah, I think it's become clear that sugar is poison. Yeah, sugar is a toxin for sure. It's a toxin. Yeah. I'm not even being facetious <laughs> when I say that. Yeah, no, I literally, yeah. Makes you grow yeah. hair on your upper lip. <laughs> that <laughs> not enough, apparently, apparently. In odd patchy <laughs> ways. Oh, it is always fun to do this show, and we always learn a lot. Mary Jo Foley comes to us from ZDNet. They still let her do it. I don't know why. All about Microsoft.com. They don't even know, right? They don't. They've never. They don't. Yeah, they have no, no. idea. No. No. No, actually, we have a lot of ZDNet people on this show. I know you do. Including the fabulous Jason Heiner and so many good yep. people on mm. ZDNet. Uh, Paul Therat, uh, is uh, he's uh, ensconced in his own little world at Therat.com. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. He's fighting for the resistance at T-H-U-R-R-O-Double-Good.com. He also writes books, and you'll find them at LeanPub.com. And he does a million podcasts uh, mm. You you have that new the new, relatively new one with Brad, right? Yeah, that's just you know fifteen minutes. This is like a little quickie thing. <laughs> it's like saying your girl on the side. Well, she's not that attractive. It's a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Paul. I can handle it. Where would we find that? Is that at Brad the, means nothing to me, Leo? <laughs> is that at the, <laughs> Is that at therot.com? Uh, yes, it is. All right. That's the therot.com. Oh, yeah, it's right there under podcast. First Ring Daily. There's also the Sam's Report, Windows mm -hmm. Weekly, What the Tech. And by the way, as long as you're at therot.com, you know what you really ought to do? You ought to subscribe to the premium version. I did, and I don't regret it. <laughs> that's a big. That's a big endorsement. I I don't regret I, it, honestly. I don't, I don't. It's like I scratched this thing off my face. I don't think it's malignant, but I don't regret it. No, no, no. I have of course subscribed, and if Mary Jo Foley charged for all about Microsoft.com, I'd pay for that too. Ooh, there's an idea. Yeah, why don't you? Do you, would you, you should do a paid newsletter for sure, Mary Jo. You would have big bucks. I know you can't. I used to. Yeah. I used to, uh, but yeah, not since I've right. been eating it. Yeah, they won't yep. let you, I'm sure. Or they'll say, we we have to do it. Yeah, they would yeah, do right. it. I yeah. forgot about that. That's, yeah, yeah, what yeah, was yeah. yours called? I don't remember that. It was called Microsoft Watch. Oh, yeah. Was I do, never mind. I do PC remember that. Week? PC Week? Or E-Week? Uh, E-Week, yep. Yep. E-Week, yeah. In fact, I think that's when I first became aware of mm. Ms. Foley. 
thank you, everybody, for uh, being here. We do Windows Weekly uh, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. If Leo gets in time, gets in in time. <laughs> you know, yeah, I was late today because I'm not kidding. It was so darn cold in Petaluma. It was like 45 degrees. Wow, really? Leo. <laughs> That's cold for there, right? Leo, Leo. Leo. <laughs> I didn't want to get out of bed. I was freezing. And then when I did, I got in the shower and I turned it all the way up and I just stood there for like half an hour and I said, oh crap, I better go to People are going into the grain bank to get warm. <laughs> yes, we're freezing here <laughs> in Petaluma. Look, I'm wearing wow. layers. You gotta uh, sleep in your socks. That's what I found out today. I read that blog post that you tweeted. That is the funniest blog post. <laughs> I So this winter, it was truly cold here and it was so cold, I started going to bed with my socks on. Oh, so this is a thing. And... Yeah, it's. I actually prefer now to sleep in socks. I mean, I think in the summer that will probably change. But um, yeah, so I actually looked at. I just looked it up randomly today. I was like, I'm. Is this weird? Like, am I constricting my circulation by doing this or something? Like, is this? And that was the thing I found. And I was like, oh. Well, the right, the, the reason I cracked up is it's from Casper. It's a Casper. Yeah. Blog yeah. Post. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You should wear socks to bed. Yep. Woollymag.com. But there's no evidence or anything. He just says no, no, no. The important thing is that if you have an opinion, that's right, you'll be able to find something on the internet that that's supports right. your sports opinion. In. Yeah. Yep. So I found this and I tweeted it. He says. So now, now it's a fact. He says that's the beauty of the internet. <laughs> feelings, <laughs> feelings have the force of law. Yeah. I think it's, it's a, a factoid. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a. Um, John, an alternate fact. John Devore, a very very funny uh, piece, and and. I'm now going to wear socks to bed. I don't know mm -hmm. how Lisa's going to feel. I'm actually wearing socks handmade by my mother. <laughs> nice. My mom has <laughs> like a crayon box. What, like what, what? <laughs> Every color. Every yeah. color. No, you know what? Men are supposed to wear these trendy, cool Jazzy socks. socks. Now, right? You know why? Because yeah. everything sure. else we wear is so boring. Yeah. I know. So we have to. It's like doctors sometimes wear funny ties, right? Mm -hmm. It's like to show they Or have, Jeffrey Snover. <laughs> yeah. Right. To show right. they have character because everything mm -hmm. men have to wear is so dull, deathly dull. Yeah. Peter yeah, O'Toole, true. his entire life, wore green socks. That's awesome. That was his trademark. Hmm. Well, now we've uh, really killed the uh, atmosphere. <laughs> let's, let's, let's just Could you get a sad trombone sound? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I know, we've got enough oh, sounds. Yeah, so. <laughs> Our show is uh, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1900 UTC. We are going to move back to a daylight saving time in a couple of weeks, but... Uh, that means our, our show will move, but I'll tell you when that happens. If you want to be in studio, you can join us. Just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. You can also watch live, twit.tv slash live. If you do that, join us in the fabulous chat room where they're now talking about socks. <laughs> yep. IRC.twit.tv. On-demand versions of the show will be provided to you upon request at twit.tv slash ww or wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Pocket Casts is currently right up there along with is iTunes. It? Yeah, Pocket Casts has become the dominant way. I don't know why. I like it. That's it's what a, I use. A, yeah, I do too. It's a good, it's a good, but uh, iTunes. Uh, That's Overcast. impressive, by the way, because you have to pay to use Pocket Casts. Yeah, but people are serious about podcasts. Yeah, I guess. that's good. Up and coming, I believe, will be all these voice assistants. You can listen to our show. Just say, just ask, yeah. you know, Echo, listen to Windows Weekly. You'll get the most recent version. And that's so that's convenient right. at home. Yeah, you don't even have to subscribe. You just yeah. walk around and talk, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I really think that's going to be that's an up and comer. <laughs> even works with the amazing Harmon Carden and Voke, which, <laughs> by <it>? the way, <laughs> I also bought. Does it? Yeah. Yes, you did. I also bought it. I even have one of these. It's not connected to anything. This is a Google Home Assistant. But it's just, mm. yeah. I have it here for looks. Yeah. It's cute. <laughs> you can. It also. It's a. It's a roll-on deodorant. Actually, the one, the most useless thing I have is the Apple HomePod. That thing doesn't connect to anything. It's just, mm, it's its sure. own. Talk about being in your own world. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye.